Now this is Rebuilding Broken Walls Ministry, which was started in the year 2019. And I want to welcome each one of you for finding time. For those that are joining for the first time, we normally meet every Thursday from 2 to 4, 4.30, they are about. And uh, this ministry is strong in teachings and in strong in deliverance. And our deliverance normally is through the word of God. So I want to welcome you anytime you are free, you can always join us. Now, today's topic is very interesting. When God gave me this topic, I'm like, what are you saying? The oozing wound is what we want to talk about today. By the way, you can also find us on YouTube. Should you want to listen to more messages, we have got very many powerful messages. So when you get time, you can always connect through the YouTube. Now we are looking at oozing wound. Wound is not interesting. I remember as we were growing up, my mother used to wash our wounds and she was... She was very rough. So we would hide our wounds until they get septic to a point where we are not able to hide them. We start limping and she gets hold of us. And my God, she does a good job on you. So when we are talking of wounds, wounds are not very interesting things. A wound, and especially when it's oozing, when it's bleeding, when it's discharging, I am looking at not physical wounds, I am looking at emotional wounds. Wounds can be terrible. Wounds can cause discomfort. Today, what I want to bring out, I want to bring out some discomfort in your life. Those things you have put and you have put them under the carpet. Those things you do not want to address because they are not interesting, because they remind you of your past, because they bring out your pain. That is what I want to address today. You cannot keep on hiding your wound. Today God has come and the Lord wants you to open your wound that he may clean it up and you receive your healing. Your wound is oozing. Your wound is septic. Your wound is smelling. Your wound is your limitation. You are putting on a mask to tell us that all is well, yet your wound is smelling. Your wound has caused you pain. You have swept your wound under the carpet thinking that it will go away. You have been walking in that pain for so long and it has not gone away. The Lord is saying today, open up that wound. Give me that wound that I may clean it up and, save and uh, heal you in the name of Jesus. Now our scripture today is from 2 Samuel 13.19. It's a young girl who was wounded by life, just the way you have been wounded by life. The Bible says, then Tamar put ashes on her head and tore her robe of many colors that was on her and laid her hand on her head and went away crying bitterly. She was wounded by a relative. The way you have been wounded by many life experiences. Brethren, you cannot keep that wound. It has limited you. You cannot hide that wound. It is now oozing. You can't hide it any longer. The Lord says, it's enough. I have come that I may heal your wound. As I was preparing this message, God gave me an experience I have never had. He gave me an opportunity to feel you, to feel your pain. It was a terrible experience. I went through motions of pain. I could feel the pain some of you are going through. I don't know who. For a while, I had to stop preparing this message. 
and go through that pain, that emotional pain that you are going through. Because God wanted me to understand you. That is not easy. What you're going through is not easy. But remember, we have a high priest who sympathizes with us. After I had gone through that pain, God gave me a message for you from Isaiah 40, verse 1 to 5. Because I asked him, what do I do with this pain? And he said, go through Isaiah 40, verse 1 to 5. And the Bible says, comfort, yes, comfort my people, says you are God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem. Put your name there. Speak comfort. Put your name there and cry out to her that her warfare is ended. You better underline that. It is not me speaking. I was given this message for me and for you that tell her her warfare is ended. Amen. That her iniquity is pardoned. Are you suffering because of sin? The Lord is saying you are sin, your iniquity is pardoned. And again, he says, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. I expect an amen. I expect amen. an amen. Amen. I am disappointed that you didn't get this message. It is for you, Isaiah 40, verse 1 to 5. You mean you didn't get this prophetic message? What prophecies are you waiting for as you listen to this message? This is a prophetic message. I was given for you by God himself. God knows you are hurting. God has sent me to comfort you. God has Amen. sent you to comfort your family. God has Amen. sent me to comfort you through this teaching today. Amen. I expected you to be excited. Amen. God has sent me to you. Go and comfort Amen. my people. Go and comfort my people. Cry out to her. And I'm crying out to you. Amen. What are you waiting for? God has come to comfort you. God has come to comfort your family. The warfare Amen. is ended. Amen. You have fought so Amen. many battles. And the Amen. Lord is saying your warfare has come to an end. I want you to Hallelujah. challenge God without, yeah. with that statement. I want you to dare God with that statement. Your warfare has come to an end. Amen. Amen. So I asked God, why the comfort? These people have gone through so much. They have been fighting for so long. They have been struggling for so long. They have been mocked for so long. Their heads have been down for so long. Mm. Why? He says, go and comfort my people. Go and tell them that God allows us to serve him as imperfect mm. vessels. Yeah. Made perfect. Why? Yeah. I am talking to some of us. You don't want to serve. You feel you are so imperfect. You feel you are such a sinner. You feel you have committed many wrongs. You feel you have had so many warfare. The Lord says he works with imperfect people to make them Amen. perfect. Hallelujah. Uh -huh, uh -huh, so if that is the uh -huh. that is how God is perceiving you, serve uh -huh. where you are and serve the way you are. God Amen. works with Amen. imperfect people 
imperfect vessels to make them perfect. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. The way God made Jesus to be seen, to become a sin for us to be delivered, that we may partake of his grace. God wants us to partake of his grace today because Amen. his grace is sufficient. It is Jesus who suffered. And God has come today. And I want to repeat, your warfare has ended. Hallelujah. You better receive Amen. it or leave it. I have taken my position. I, I have it in the name taken of it Jesus. because I went through that pain for your mm -hmm. sake. I'm telling you mm -hmm. that feeling. Oh my God, mm -hmm. I cried. It was mm. too much for me to bear your pain. Mm -hmm. And I was imagining if that is what Jesus went through, the sins of the whole world, how was it? I want you to know, brethren, that God shares in your pain. Amen. God shares in your disgrace. Amen. God shares in your disappointment. Amen. Because sometimes it seems like God doesn't care. I want to tell you that God cares. Yes. When you look at Hebrews 4.15, it says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. We have one who understands our weaknesses. When we struggle, Jesus Christ, our high priest, understands. When we are in pain, when we are disappointed, when we are disgraced by life experience, we have a high priest who understands us. Brethren, I want to tell you that Jesus pains when you pain. Don't think when you pain you are alone. Jesus is there with you. The spirit of God dwells in you. As you are paining, he is also paining with you. And he is ready to intervene in your situation. For his plans and his desires for you are good plans. You are his concern. You are his concern, not anybody else. So he cannot Amen. leave you Amen. alone. Amen. Why are you the concern Amen. of Jesus? When you look at Jude one twenty four, the Bible says, Nine to him, now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. His aim is to present you blameless. So he's going to work with you because he has a mission for you. He's going to encourage you. He's going to stand with you because at the end of the day, he has to present you blameless. Amen. That is his project. Mm. What I want you to know, this is a very heavy message. If you don't believe in prophecies, please get away because it's prophetic. This message is prophetic. Jesus is ministering to your spirit. As I speak, I want to inform you that diverse uh, miracles will be taking place. I don't have to lay my hands on you. As I speak, there are burdens that will be lifted up and there are yokes that will be broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Brethren, this message is for you. Don't ever imagine, I wish Ruth was here. I wish Benjamin was here. Don't wish anybody else. This is your message of deliverance. Amen. Your life has been oozing with shame. Mm. Your life has been oozing with disgrace. Your life has been oozing with struggles. Your life has been oozing with disappointment. Together with your family, you have never seen any good day. But today, Jesus says, today when you hear the word, do not harden your hearts. Because Jesus has come. I want you to know, brethren, 
Jesus has taken away your blame. Amen. Here Amen. I am talking about blame by others. And I'm also talking about self-blame. If Jesus has taken away your blame, why are you holding on to guilt? Why are you still condemning yourself for things that Jesus has already taken away? He has sent me to come and tell you that you are blameless because he has to present you blameless before his Amen. father. Amen. Jesus Amen. has taken away your accusation. You have been accused of all manner of things. Yes. Some of those things are true, while others are not true. But if you have already presented your case before God, if you have confessed your sin and you have repented, why are you holding on to that accusation? Paul said, I have not killed anyone. Neither have I wronged anyone. In the natural, Paul was a murderer. Why are you belittling yourself? Jesus has taken away your accusation. Again, I want to persuade you in the name of Jesus that Jesus has taken away your self-hatred. You hate yourself passionately. And that, of course, has affected your interpersonal relationship. How can you hate yourself so much that you see nothing good in you? You are fearfully and wonderfully created. Why hate yourself with a passion? Why hate your family with a passion? Jesus has taken away that self-hatred because you were fearfully and wonderfully created. Amen. I want you to start admiring yourself, appreciating yourself as God's workmanship. Why do you hate yourself? Because you are comparing yourself with others. You cannot be me and I cannot be you. Also, I want you to know that Jesus has taken away your rejection. Some of you have suffered a lot of rejection. Even your own dog has rejected you. It is that serious. Everything around you rejects you. I want to tell you that Jesus has sent me to you today. And Jesus has taken away your rejection because he has released favor upon you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive that favor today. And I want I to see. declare and decree that favor is your portion. As you go out, favor is your portion. As you come in, favor is your portion. As you walk, you will be favored. Even your enemies will favor you. Oh, yes. I want you to mark Amen. that. I am speaking under the anointing of God. And I mean it that even your enemies, they will favor you. They will favor your family. In the name of Jesus. Again, Jesus has taken away your stigma. You are walking in fear. You are afraid of what people will say about you. You don't want to be seen in public places because of what people will say about you. Jesus has taken away your stigma. Last week we Amen. were talking about horns that have been sent to scatter you. Horns that have been sent to disgrace you. I want to tell you that those horns have been cut off. You be released Amen. and be set free in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Orasikana Jesus has taken away your disgrace. Look at that woman with the issue of blood. She was caught red-handed in the act. And they were ready to kill her. They are ready to disgrace her. But look at what Jesus did. 
Jesus took away her disgrace. The way Jesus has taken away your disgrace. Yes, you have been yeah. you have not been walking right. God knows you have not been walking right, but he wants somebody to present before the Father blameless and you are that person. Look at this woman, Samaritan woman. A husband snatcher, let me call her that. Yet she met Jesus and her life changed. Because her life was woozing with shame. She was such a disgrace in the village. But Jesus came for her and Jesus changed her story. Are you going to allow Jesus today to clean up that wound that has been oozing, oozing for so long? Are you going to allow Jesus to transform your life? Are you going to allow, allow Jesus to deliver you from the bondage of the enemy because your wound is stinking? I have come for you today. This message is not easy. It wasn't easy for me. Neither is it easy for you. But you got to position yourself to receive it because God is out to deliver you. Amen. God is out to deliver you. Amen. Some of you are defiled as children. I have got five women here who have gone through that ordeal. You are defiled as children. And you have not forgiven yourself. You are blaming yourself. It is not you. It's not about you. Yes, it has happened. When you think about it, my God, it has affected your sexual life. But I have come with news today that God has taken away that disgrace. He says, mm -hmm. just expose the wound to me. I know you are hurting. Even in adulthood, these things are pursuing them. Today, in the name of Jesus, as I speak, I want to cancel that image that has tormented you. I want to uproot those uh -huh. thoughts that have haunted you in the, name of, in the name of Jesus. Just like the way we are told to renew our minds in the book of Romans 12. I renew your mind by the grace of God. You will oh, not yes. remember those things anymore. You will not see those images anymore. You will not receive katabasika katika jina la Yesu Christo. Jesus has taken away your disappointments. Amen. Yes, you have been disappointed many times. No. Your children have disappointed you. Your family has disappointed you. It looks like nothing is happening in your family. But Jesus has sent me today to tell you that he has taken it away. There is no more disappointments. In the name of Jesus, he has come Amen. to change your life. He has come Amen. to turn around your captivity. No more Amen. disappointments. But I speak Amen. of appointments. You are going to be appointed. Your children will be appointed. Amen. Jesus has come to take away your guilt. Amen. That guilt that is killing you, that guilt that is tormenting you, Amen. it is not normal. The devil wants to make sure that you don't enjoy your life. Amen. But today he has sent me to declare that you are no longer going to go through guilt for he has Amen. taken away your guilt. You are no longer under any condemnation for you are in law in the Lord Jesus Christ. Today's Amen. lesson is hard because that wound is too deep. Because you have been hiding that wound for too long. But we can see it with a spiritual eye. The family wound is hidden. It is now oozing. That bandage is wet. I am talking of emotional wounds. Mm -hmm. 
with Jesus has come to heal. You can't continue like that. So the story of Tamar, which is in the book of 2 Samuel 13, 19, we are talking of a young girl who was raped. We are talking of a virgin who was raped by his own stepbrother. That is incensed. And this young girl called Tamar was raped by his stepbrother called Amon. Amon was the firstborn of King David. Amon grew up at a time when King David was famous, when King David was powerful. So he grew up at a time when the father was at his climax. You can imagine what he enjoyed as a young man. He had too much time in his hands and too little control over his thoughts. I want to talk about thoughts. Sometimes we ignore thoughts, but we counselors say it starts with a thought. Then it creates an emotion. Lastly, it brings out a behavior. A thought which is not managed. Because some of us are in trouble because we have, we have not managed our thoughts. The minute you don't manage your thought, it will create an emotion. And then lastly, it comes out through behavior. Ammon set his eyes on his stepsister. He, he was lustful. He looked at her with lustful eyes. And he did not control his thoughts. What are you supposed to do? You have to take responsibility of your thoughts. The minute a thought lands, you are supposed to destroy it immediately. Whether you understand the thought or not, cancel it in the name of Jesus. Never think you are too strong to stand temptations. So this thought came about the stepsister. And what he did, he decided he was obsessed. He was obsessed and he decided to rape her because of the sexual desires, those desires that come through thoughts, those desires that you don't tame, those desires that you don't deal with can put you or can land you into a lot of trouble. So he slept, he raped the sister, humiliating her. After raping her, he chased her out of the room those five women, I want to tell you that the ordeal is over. That experience has been nullified. Those images have been canceled. God has renewed your life. God has renewed your thoughts because he, was, he is God. What was the aim of Ammon? He wanted to victimize the sister. Can you imagine? The way he chased her out of the room is like, get out of here. It is your problem. It is your mistake. Self-blame. He wanted her to blame herself for what has happened to her. The way you are blaming yourself because the marriage does not work. The way you are blaming yourself because somebody has raped you. They blame the way you have dressed. They blame the way you talk. They blame everything. They want to make sure that they put guilt in your life. That's why that wound is oozing. Why are they blaming you? They want to create fear. You are the worst person. They want to put in you that you are the worst Christian. They want to put in you, in you that you are the worst of women. That you may feel 
guilty. Brethren, today I have come to speak to you. You have been on that mountain for too long. You have been on that issue for too long. Some of you who are listening to me, you have been on that mistreatment from childhood for too long. You have been on that marriage, wrong marriage for too long. You have been on, oh my God, the wound is now oozing. The wound now is infected because you can't operate like that. I want to talk to you today. God is on your side. Yes, it happened. Yes, you are rejected. Yes, you are mistreated. Yes, yes, these things happened. You were defiled as a child. Yes, even as a grown-up, you have been raped. God says, I know all these things. God says, I am your high priest who sympathizes with your weakness. It was a weakness. It is not your fault. But I have come with good news today that God has sent me to you today that you may be delivered. That you may be delivered. You cannot continue like that. The Bible says we renew our thoughts, renew your mind. If only you could let it go. Today I want you to present it before God and say, God, this issue about my childhood, this issue about my marriage, this issue about my boss taking advantage of me, this issue about relatives taking advantage of me, I bring it to you. It is painful. It is painful, but Lord, because you have sent your servant, I want to believe in her. Believe in the prophet and you shall prosper. I want you to be careful. Never be overconfident about situations. Sometimes we are too confident. We feel like we are too saved. We feel like we can withstand every temptation. The Bible says if you feel you are standing, watch out. 1 Corinthians 10, 12. If you ever feel you are strong, if you ever feel you can resist sin on your, in, uh, on your own, if you ever feel I'm okay, we are told to watch out. Because sin is real. We are living in a wicked world. But today, the Lord has come to save us Rika Masika Takazika. If you read the story of Tama, this man called Amon, his brother, what did he do? He went to seek counsel. When he wanted the sister badly, lustfully, he went to seek counsel from his friend, a bad man. Makasaka Takaribosa. You have gone to seek counsel from wrong people. When he went to seek counsel from his friend, his friend told him, you go and sleep with her. Instead of helping him to stand strong, he says, go ahead, go and sleep with her. Musa katakara, risa katakara. Be careful. Be careful where you seek counsel. If somebody is in trouble and you're going to seek counsel from that troubled person, what do you expect? Oh, shara What does uh, Psalms 1 1 says? Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. You are going to seek the counsel of the ungodly. Nor stands in the path of sinners. You are going to stand with sinners to discuss your issues. Nor sit in the seat of scornful. 
What are you doing to yourself? What are you doing? Yes, you are hurting. Yes, the wound is oozing. But the Lord has sent me to you today. Leave it open. Leave it open. He wants to cleanse it up. Leave it open. He wants to deal with that wound. It's so, it's so deep, yes. But his name is Jehovah Rapha. Amen. I want you to let go. I want you to let go. It's a bad experience. You have experienced nightmares after nightmares because of that ordeal, because of that rejection, because of that mistreatment. God is for you and God is for us. What was the effect of this experience by Tamar? How did it affect her? When you read that word, it says Tamar put ashes on her head. Tamar put on ashes on her head. A sign of sorrow. A sign of distress. A sign of humiliation. A sign of deep mourning. A son of affliction of the soul, affliction of the body, why she was a virgin, and affliction of the mind, a sign of emotional death because she stopped living the way you have stopped living since that time you had that experience. You have stopped living your life. But God says he has come to revive your life, to revive your family, to revive your children, to revive your marriage, Amen. to revive you. Amen. So she put on ashes on her head. She was sorrowful. Can you imagine that act? She was so distressed. She was trying to imagine what will people say about me. That was emotional death. Somebody decided to end her life emotionally. Just like the way they have decided to end your life emotionally. To end the life of your children emotionally. The wound is oozing. But you can't continue living like that. There is hope. There is hope, brethren. And I have come to give you hope today. Amen. This message, I Amen. went through a lot of emotional pain. And even this afternoon again, I went through it. Because God wanted me to, to feel you. To be able to understand what you're going through. Secondly, she tore her garments, her garment, her garment of many colors, a royal garment. There, is, there was no more royalty in her. There is no beauty in you. There is no hope in you. There is no joy in you because of what, has hap what happened to you or what is still happening to you. I have come. Yes, the garment has been torn, a royal garment. Your life has been torn apart. Your plans have been torn apart. Your family has been torn apart. That garment meant a high rank. It meant status. It gave her identity. Before this thing happened to you, you had status. You had an identity. There was a mark of distinction. But they have emotionally killed you. But God says he is the resurrection. He has come to give you life and life in abundance. Amen. Oh my God. 
Some of us have resigned to that situation. You have resigned to the enemy's affliction. You have made bad choices as coping skills. You have thrown away your dignity because of the suffering you're going through. Forgive me. God have mercy. Ah, mercy, Lord. When we make wrong choices because of life experience, have mercy, Lord. When we give in to the enemy's affliction, have mercy, Lord. Oh, God, have mercy. And then they said, Tamara, or Tamar, laid her hand on her head. You know, when we are grieving, what we normally do, it is too much, it is too painful. You are feeling sorry for yourself. You are asking yourself questions. Why me? Why are all these things happening to me? Why am I the one suffering? Why is my family suffering? That is what Tamar, Tamar did. She put her hands on her head as a sign of despair, as a sign of deep emotions. It was not easy for her. And the Bible says she went away crying bitterly. Tamar went away because she was thrown out by her stepbrother. Get out of here. After disgracing her. Some of you, after being disgraced, you have been thrown out of your family. But the Lord is here. Amen. The Lord has come for you. Amen. Tamar went away as a bitter person. You are so bitter because of life experience. You are walking out of your family because of life experience. You are walking out of that job because of life experience. She went away a bitter person. You have walked away a bitter person. That is why the wound is oozing. You have not solved the problem. You have just walked away, but carrying the problem with you and carrying the experience with you. So wherever you go, you have that experience with you. As long as you've not dealt with the matter, it still speaks, it still follows. She went away disgraced. She went away disgraced. Imagine what happened to her. There was no hope for her. She was not going to get married again. She felt so useless, hopeless, and helpless. I'm speaking to you in this place today. You have walked away of that situation, feeling helpless and hopeless. Because you have been disgraced. Yeah. The wound is oozing. It's oozing blood. It's oozing pus. It's oozing water. Masha Kata. You have walked away rejected. And the rejection here was she was rejected not only by the brother, stepbrother Amon, but also by the society. I am speaking to somebody who has been rejected by the family. You have been rejected by the society. You have been despised. You have been mocked. You have been mistreated. I have come with good news today. The Lord is on your side. Yes, it's hard. It's so painful. But we have the balm of Gilead. He's out to heal you. She left there stigmatized. Like the way you are stigmatized. You're wondering what will people say about me? You're wondering what will my family think about me? 
You are wondering what will my friends think about me? As much as you are thinking about it, the wound is oozing much more. My God. Marise kete kerebosita. Brethren, I have come with good news. God has seen your suffering. God has seen your suffering. And God is saying, you've been on this mountain for too long. You have been crying about this issue for too long. You have been carrying this issue for too long. The Lord is speaking to you. He says, allow me. Allow me to minister to you. That's what the Lord is saying. Allow me to minister to you. As I continue, I want you to take some time and pray. Take some time where you are. Take some time where you are. And call forth those things that are. Call them forth in the name of Jesus. Masakata karibasita. Hey. Pray like never before. Pray like never before. It is so painful, I know. But you must deal with it. You must deal with it. You must deal with it. It is so painful. It is so painful. Rika sakata karibu. Come on, cry to the Lord. You have been on that mountain for too long. Rika na masuti kizeke. Rika na masuti ribosika. You have been on that mountain for too long. You have been on that mountain for too long. Cry to the Lord and give that issue to him. Cry to the Lord and give him that issue. Cry to the Lord and give him that issue. Cry to the Lord and give him that issue. Give him that issue. Give him that issue. Give him that issue. Tell him God have it. It is too heavy on me. It is too heavy on me. It is burdensome. It is burdensome. Cry, 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 cry to the Lord. Cry to the Lord, cry to the Lord. Oh my God. I want you to cry out that. Cry out that issue. Cry out that issue. Cry out that issue. It has taken your time. It has taken away your joy. It has taken away your life. It has taken away your being. You have stopped living. You have stopped living. Oh, masakata kiribasita. Rima sakata kiribasita. Ru sakata cry, cry, cry out that issue. Cry out that issue. Hand it over to God. Hand it over to God. Hand it over to God. In the name of Jesus. Hand it over to God. Oh my God. Hand it over to God. It is painful. Release that pain. Release that pain to Jesus. Jesus is here. He is our high priest. He has come to comfort you. Jesus is here. Release it to him. Release it to him. Release it to him. Release that pain to Jesus. Uri masakata kaze.